dieselly. Okay, so a Toyota Hilux might not be one of the ultimate iconic sports cars you always dreamed of owning, but like it or not, they're a popular thing. In fact, it's been very popular for a very long time. Let's find out why. Finished in Silver Sky, this particular Toyota Hilux is the new top spec SR5 based Rugged X. And in Australia, it'll cost you around about $65,000 or for context, that's about the same as a V8 powered Ford Mustang. Australian designed and developed, the Rugged X is intended to give 4x4 enthusiasts an off-road ready factory alternative to going down the aftermarket modification path. And as I'm going to show you, this thing is jam-packed with genuinely good off-road gear. Starting with the front, and you can see this is a seriously tough looking Toyota Hilux. As standard, you get auto leveling, LED headlights and LED daytime running lights and actually really like this little Hilux detail that you can see in the light there as well. Underneath that, you've got this fairly serious winch compatible steel bull bar, and that comes standard with these two outboard spread beam LED lights on either side, and this LED light bar as standard with 24 LEDs that'll spit out a blinding 120 watts. If we look even lower, we can see underneath this Toyota stamped five millimeter thick high tensile alloy bash plate. And you can also see these 20 millimeter thick recovery points, one on each side. And there's actually two more at the back, which I'll show you a little bit later on. Up from here, you've got a super chunky plastic grill which I quite like and easily one of the biggest Toyota badges I've ever seen on the front of a car. Up from there, you've got this nice gloss black strip, the bonnet strip here. And up from there, a little bit hard to miss, is the very subtle rugged decal on the bonnet there. As we move down the car, you can see this Toyota stamped black plastic snorkel there, which can help you out in a variety of off-road situations. We can also see the plastic molding around the guards and that flows along to the doors as well. And while we're down here, I'll just show you these really cool rock rails here. Nice addition on the car, gives you some extra protection when you are off-roading, uh, as well as making life a little bit easier to get in and out of the car. Plastic on the top here, but the rest of it's really, really sturdy. Up from there, we can see these cool dark gray Hilux badges that are on both sides of the car. And you've got some gloss black wing mirrors here as well with a cool integrated indicator strip there. And that matches nicely with these gloss black door handles here. We can see the little button just there for your keyless entry. Keeping the black and tough theme going, you can see these standard Fitment 17 inch tough alloy wheels. And yes, they're actually called that. I'm not just saying that and they come standard wrapped in Yokohama Geolander AT G94 tires. If we have a closer look inside the wheels up front, we get 319 mil ventilated discs with four piston calipers. And at the rear, we get two 95 millimeter drum brakes. Yes, I said drum brakes if we have a look inside and i've got to say it's a pretty plush place for a dual cab ute uh, it is very dark inside but we'll talk more about that in a second you do though get these perforated leather accented heated front seats in the rugged x and as you can see the drivers is an eight-way power adjustable seat whereas the passengers is completely manually adjustable you also get these Nice hard wearing Hilux stamped all weather floor mats and we'll give these a good workout today a little bit later on. If we jump in, that's better. If you have a look around and one of the first things that you notice when you jump into the Hilux is the amount of buttons. There are buttons everywhere and I can tell you because it's me that just up front here alone you have 46 buttons that you can play with. That's, that's a lot of buttons. As I said, it is very dark in here. And part of that is obviously you've got the dark leather seats. You've got some uh, black plastics, lots of black plastics. You've also got this high gloss finish here. There's lots of trim accents with the gloss 
along here as well. It's actually lightly speckled, so it looks a little bit fancy as well. Gloss black on the uh, multifunction steering wheel, and you can see on the bottom there, there's some more gloss black there. More gloss black around the surround for the six-speed automatic transmission. This has a premium shifter, which again, gloss black, and uh, I guess a faux leather there as well. And again, with the steering wheel, that's a uh, premium steering wheel. The feel isn't super supple to the hands or anything like that. And again, hard plastic in the middle there as well. What is good is that not only is this steering wheel reach adjustable, it's also rake adjustable. There's also a newly restyled instrument cluster here. Now, if I push this button, you'll see not only are they white faced gauges now with orange needles, but your central 4.2 inch instrument display plays you a little film. Oh yeah of the Hilux, just to remind you that you are in fact in a Hilux. Now, if we bring that up, you can see there the white faces look pretty cool, the white backlighting, and also the orange needles there for the instruments. There's a push button start, climate control air conditioning, power mirrors, power windows front and rear, all auto down and auto up, plus two super secret pop out cup holders. There's a six speaker stereo paired with a seven inch central touchscreen with satellite navigation, Bluetooth phone connectivity, DAB digital radio, and even a CD player. Remember CDs? Standard safety includes a rear view camera, adaptive cruise control, which can be switched to non-radar cruise simply by pushing and holding the end of the stalk, a pre-collision safety system with pedestrian and cyclist detection, better known as AEB, a lane departure alert, and downhill assist control. There's also a 4x4 transfer switch with a low range option, and drive mode buttons for both eco and power modes. Storage is pretty good too. You've got this little shelf here that's pretty good for a phone. It is a little bit hard and scratchy, not rubber lined or anything like that. You've got two decent sized cup holders here. I'll show you the key just while we're here. Check it out. Hilux, just so you know what you're driving. That's a pretty cool key. Um, we've also got your 12 volt outlets, one on that side, one on this side, as well as USB and auxiliary inputs there. You've also got this little change or coin area here for a sort of junk and keys. It doesn't quite fit a current uh, iPhone, but uh, it's not too bad. What's really good is this center console bin that you can see here. And if we lift that up, it feels really nice on the top and inside. You can see it's actually quite deep. It's also felt lined in there, which is good. You've actually also got another outlet there, which is probably too dark to see, but that's actually a 100 watt, 220 volt plug outlet there, which means you can plug in some various things which is quite good in terms of door pockets they're not too bad a little bit narrow and slender here deep enough to fit a bottle though uh, again just uh, plastic no rubber lining or felt lining in there either looking up and if we head up towards you can see this pretty cool black headliner here and up here we've also got a sunglasses holder which is again always handy you've got your two sun visors nothing for the driver but you do get a flip up vanity mirror for your front passenger. Lastly as well, my favorite thing, the glove box. And not only does the Toyota Hilux have a pretty decent large glove box here with your owner's manual in it. Not a very exciting owner's manual, just a conventional Toyota Hilux owner's manual. Uh, but push the Hilux button, boom, secret box. Uh, and that can be air conditioned and cooled as well. So you can look after different drinks and things here. When in doubt, push the Hilux button. We have a quick look in the back, and again, you can see pretty dark inside, more perforated uh, leather seats. Your two outboard seats, as you can see here, they are both Isofix compatible, which is good for families. Um, other than that, there's not too much going on. You do get a nice fold-down center armrest with two cup holders, Lux indeed. If we put that up, you've got adjustable headrests in the back as well. If we jump in, you can also see we've got, again, more durable all-weather floor mats, which are very good. You've got rear air vents, which is excellent. You've got mat pockets, which is great as well. And a cool little thing with a four kilogram rating, you have these little hooks for shopping, 
fixed to the back of the seat there. So really, really good, really nice and handy. One thing that is a little bit strange and something to just look out for, we all love a grab handle and the Hilux has plenty of them. You've got two in the rear on each side, two in the front on each side. As you can see, I'm about six foot. It's in a little bit of a precarious spot, particularly if we are doing some off-roading or four-wheel driving, just be aware that that's a pretty hard plastic. You don't really want to smack your head on that. Careful of the grab handles. That's my tip. Back outside, you can also see we've got the rear privacy glass. And as we move to the back, you can see this very cool rugged X branded black sports bar. Now it's not just for aesthetics. Toyota actually says that you can load up 75 kilograms worth of vertical load onto the sports bar. And thanks to its multiple tie down points in the back, you can actually strap down up to 200 kilograms to the floor of the tub. Speaking of the tub, at the back of the tailgate, we've got, again, more black accents here, also a black handle for the release, and you can see more shadow grey Hilux badges, and again, another rugged X badge. If we drop the tailgate, that tub liner that you can see, nice plastic, durable unit, and again, some tie down points here. You've got two at the back, two at the front that you can see, along with those extra points on the sports bar itself. Plenty of space in the back for all sorts of activities. At the back too, I'll show you, you do on the Rugged X, get these matte black tail light surrounds as well, just completing the tough look. And underneath, you can see we also get this cool steel rear bar, again, a heavy duty rear bar. And as I said before, those two extra recovery points at the back of the car, one on the right hand side, one on the left hand side that you can see, and you also get a standard fitment, a Toyota Genuine tow bar that's neatly integrated into that rear bumper as well. Under the bonnet, you'll find a 2.8 litre four cylinder 1GD FTV common rail turbo diesel engine, which in Australia puts out 130 kilowatts of power at 3,400 RPM and 450 newton metres of torque between 1,600 and 2,400 RPM, or 30 newton metres less if you opt for the six speed manual. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I know, I know, the DPF stuff. For those who may not know, there's an ongoing issue with the Hilux and its diesel particulate filter, or DPF. Effectively, the DPF works by capturing fine particles before they are emitted through the exhaust and regularly burning them off at extremely high temperatures. The catch is, while this is meant to occur automatically without the driver needing to do anything, if the vehicle is not driven long enough at high enough speeds to enable the burn cycle process to occur, the filter becomes overloaded. As a result of the issue, all diesel Hilux models, both 2.8 litre and 2.4 litre engines, now feature a diesel particulate filter switch, so owners can manually initiate a burn cycle to cleanse the system and reduce emissions. Now, a class action over faulty DPFs is currently underway, so all Toyota Australia is saying at the moment is as follows, and this is their statement. We encourage any Toyota owners with questions or concerns about their DPF to contact their closest or preferred Toyota dealer or the guest experience center. Alternatively, customers can find out more via a comprehensive DPF frequently asked questions section of the Toyota Australia website. We are unable to comment on matters before the courts, but reiterate our commitment as always to helping our customers with any questions or concerns they have about their vehicle. Got all that? Okay, moving on. So, confession time. I've always actually had a bit of a soft spot for a big truck, a four x four, an off-road beast. I might be a track guy, but it does look like a whole lot of fun. Provided, of course, you never need to stop or turn. In fact, one of the fondest memories I have in a car is going places you're really not supposed to go in a Jeep Wrangler. And the thing was awesome, didn't miss a beat. So where are we heading today in the Hilux? Well, that very same spot. Before we get there though, a little about the Hilux. The Hilux first launched in Australia back in 1968 with the original first generation N10. It was basic. It had seats in the front and a tray in the back. And that's all it needed to do, it was brilliant. 
farmers, tradies, they loved it for the fact that you could take it pretty much anywhere and do pretty much anything in it. Then, seven generations later in 2015, Toyota launched this car, the all-new eighth-generation Toyota Hilux. It had more refinement, more equipment, and more technology than ever before. The Hilux was back, only this time, instead of targeting their traditional buyer set, the farmers, the tradies, the game had moved on. The world had changed. No longer was it the traditional buyers that were looking at getting these dual cab utes. Now, all of a sudden, you had mums and dads, senior management, maybe even overly active social media influencers buying these things. Everyone wanted one, and that was reflected in terms of sales. Back in 2010, the Toyota Hilux was Australia's third best-selling car, trailing the Toyota Corolla and, at the time, the best-selling Holden Commodore. Cut to today, and in 2019, the Toyota Hilux is not only the country's best-selling car, it's been the best-selling car for three years in a row leading the Ford Ranger and the Toyota Corolla in third place. That's right, top three best-selling cars in the country, and we've got two dual cab utes. We're a bit weird here in Australia. So the question is, have all these matcha green tea, chai latte sipping buyers gone to the Hilux's head? Or is it still the truck we've known and loved for so long? Well, <laughs> this is our turn off, so it's time to find out. So this is normally the bit <laughs> where I would be telling you about ride and handling and maybe something like brake feel, but right now, to be honest, I'm just having too much fun, having an, an absolute ball. This thing is awesome. At more than 5.3 meters long and more than 1.8 meters wide, the Toyota Hilux ain't small, but it's actually slightly more compact than its most direct rival, the Ford Ranger Wildtrak. <laughs> and while a more aggressive tire, a more extreme tire would definitely help in these sorts of situations, the Hilux is helped out with its impressive 251 millimeters of ground clearance, along with its 28 degree approach angle, 21 degree departure angle and 49 degree breakover angle. Now, it's not a light truck, especially in Rugged X, guys. The Hilux is over two ton. <laughs> but the plus side is, if you do want to do some towing, it also has a 3200 kilogram towing capacity. If you go with the six-speed automatic, that goes up to 3,500 kilograms if you go with the six-speed manual. With double wishbones and a stabilizer bar up front and leaf springs and a rigid rear axle out back, the Hilux doesn't ride the best on the road. It's quite fidgety, oscillates and moves around a lot, just doesn't ever feel like it settles. But out here, <laughs> you just don't notice. It's not a problem at all. It's built to do this stuff and it's doing this stuff so easily. When you're running around in the city, going from business meeting to coffee date, you're probably not gonna investigate your low range too much. But I can tell you out here having low range Having a rear differential lock all makes a big difference. <laughs> and depending on where you find yourself, you'll be bloody glad they're there. Tree. Like the suspension, the steering isn't gonna be your best friend around town. It's 3.43 turns lock to lock, which feels like a lot. It's a lot of work driving around town. Out here again though, it just points. It goes where you wanna put it. It's just simply not an issue. I guess what I'm saying is if you own a Hilux, <laughs> go off-road. Go off-road, you'll have a ball. Getting into some of these steeper areas and not even clipping those rock rails, which is pretty impressive. The engine too, especially now that we're in 
low range, lots of good torque. We're sitting about 2000 RPM. The engine feels pretty flexible. Of course, most people when they're off-roading, more power is usually what people want, but there's ample there, especially to do this level of off-roading. A good bit of adventuring, nothing too extreme, and the car's definitely capable <laughs> and up for it. The transmission too, I can totally see why sticking with the auto is a good idea. Again, especially if you are switching between driving in the city and the occasional off-road adventure. It pretty much gives you the best of both worlds and it's not getting too lost. As I said, particularly in low range, going a bit slower on this stuff. It's not hunting at all and it's all working together to make this thing get through here like a piece of cake. And the brake feel is actually really nice. The pedal's actually very progressive. So it gives you a lot of control. There's feel there, but the stopping power behind them is still really, really good. As I said, the only thing potentially that could hold back the car on some of these sort of roads, trails, would be the tires. But even at the moment, with the pressures down a bit, they're holding up pretty well. It's interesting thinking about how far the Hilux has come. And a lot is different since 51 years ago when the first generation came out to Australia. But what I love most about the Toyota Hilux, other than how, <laughs> how well it's putting up with me and this trail, is the history of the car. It's a Hilux, it's always been a Hilux and that hasn't changed. The recipe is still the same. Seats in the front, tray out the back. It'll pretty much go where you want it to go <laughs> when you want it to do it. And that is seriously impressive. And talk about popular, since launching in Australia in 68, Toyota Australia says they have sold over 1,050,000 Toyota Hiluxes. That's a lot of utes. Of course, you could go down the path of modifying your car, but for a standard, Hilux to give you the flexibility that this car does, that's pretty impressive. So whether you're a tradie, a farmer, or a social media influencer, <laughs> guess what? Hilux is still a Hilux. Well, I'm gonna slowly find my way back to civilization, but if you have any questions at all, please, <laughs> leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them and remember to like, subscribe and follow. See you next time.